As you can see, Miss Tiffany and Ali are already having a grand old time up at the Blue Whale of Catoosa. Welcome to Uranus on Route 66. My name is Brian, and today we are going to be speaking with Linda Hobbs. She's going to be telling us all about this wonderful attraction in Catoosa, Oklahoma. So sit back, relax, and be sure you join us as we're going to explore the Blue Whale of Catoosa. Who thinks a giant whale is an amazing anniversary gift? Hugh Davis did, that's who. His wife loved and collected figurines of whales. So as a token of love, he got the building, and now their love is showcased in Catoosa, Oklahoma, long after they've passed. We got a chance to sit down with Linda Hobbs so she could give us all the information on the blue whale of Catoosa. Hi, I'm Linda Hobbs. I am the, as some people call me, the whale wrangler. Uh, I'm the gift shop manager and uh, information uh, guru of the Blue Well in Catoosa, Oklahoma. Uh, love my job. I've been here nine years. And uh, so basically, I, I'm the one that mostly you're going to meet. And I hope you like meeting me when you do. Well, the well, um, you have to ex understand the man before you can understand why you have a well. Hugh Davis was incredibly gifted from the time he was five. They knew he could carve perfectly. By the time he was 16, he'd help build a children's camp in Estes Park, Colorado, called Chile Camp. Um, by, I think he was 20, when he was hired to photograph a wildlife expedition in the jungle of South Africa. He was there almost a year. Uh, when he was 23, he was hired as Tulsa Zoo director in 1932. I think the Tulsa Zoo was about four years old. So he did that for 34 years. Lots of expeditions, lots of lions and tigers and bears and snakes, oh no. Uh, so I think I'd love to be on one of those expeditions, right. but no. Uh, but he, I've actually had people tell me that without him, the Tulsa Zoo would not be anywhere what it really? is today. He did that for 34 years. Uh, was too young to retire, so he decided they needed a source of income. And the first roadside attraction here was the Petting Zoo and Education Center, which was behind the old ark. Um, it had American alligators, a venomous snake pit, a children's snake pit that you could climb in and pick up a snake, uh, with adult supervision, of course, non venomous, yeah, big island turtles, um, long walking trails over the water the alligators were in. And it was just all of this awesome place, birthday parties, all of that. So they would get hot. Pond was on the same property. Ask if they could jump in the pond, and you and Zelta would say yes. So they had a pier already built on the pond dump for the kids to jump off of because they swam in it all the time. You went home one night, drew a well on his dinner napkin and came back and told his friends he was going to build a concrete well. And they said, how are you going to do that? You've never really worked in concrete. And he said, how are you going to be? And that was, that was his answer. Oh, wow. And he started. And, I mean, he did, as far as we know, it's the only thing the man ever put on graph paper because the rest of it, he was one of these that would just see it and do it. Mm -hmm. um, I call them the dreamers and doers. They don't hesitate. They, if they think they can, if they can envision it, they just do it. Yeah. And that's the way he was. He put the well on graph paper because he also did the platform underneath. He started hand sculpting the well in 1970 and finished it in 1972. And he literally hand sculpted it, sitting con oh. scooping concrete out of five gallon buckets and hand sculpted this thing. Did the framework. Uh, he did have one friend, Hugh Davis did not weld. That's, I mean, did not weld. That's the only thing I know he didn't do. Um, and when it was done, it was wired with electricity, plumbed with water. The fins are water slides. There was a diving board out the tail. You got oh, missed it when you walked awesome. in. Yeah. I think it was, well, the original 
attraction here, mm -hmm. which was, was it went through many names, Zelta's Alligator Ranch, um, all kind all kinds of names before it finally settled on Nature's Acres Petting Zoo and Education Center is what it was finally just came down to. Uh -huh. um, I don't think the swimming, the whale was, it was just one of Hugh's thoughts. Okay. It's like um, the original roadside attraction was yes. The, the Petting Zoo and Education Center, yes, I'm sure. Because they bought this property in 1954, if I remember correctly. And this is only half of this pond. So when I get asked if the whale could always claim Route 66, yes, it can. Because in 1957, before 1957, Route 66 was on that side of their home. After 1957, when they took out two sharp curves, it was on this side of their home. And both sides of it was their property. The other part of this pond is on the other side of the highway. Uh -huh. So they went straight across their pond, uh -huh. left their home, the other part of the pond over there, and all of the rest of the property over here. So yes, the blue block can definitely claim Route okay. 66. But was that the reason that the whale was put here? No. No. People don't want to leave, a lot of them. They'll be like, and I was like late like getting here one day at a doctor's appointment or something, and this young couple was here. And I said, um, I'm sorry I'm late, and, and they said, oh, it's okay, we've already been here two hours. And oh, I'm, wow. they said, we don't ever want to leave. Aww. And I'm like, well, what is it about, what is it? And they said, well, we just have this feeling like there's a little magic here that if we could just step one step sideways, we could step back into the 70s. <laughs> and believe it or not, I hear that a lot. I really do. We want to live in this time. and. I hear that from young adults, from older, they remember, the older ones, they remember the 70s and 80s and, you know, it was just a more innocent time. When we come back, we're going to talk more with Linda and find out what her connection to the whale is. Stay tuned. especially stickers in Uranus. Watch how they make any item instantly better. So don't wait, get yours today at UranusGeneralStore.com. Even Ali wanted to dive into the belly of the whale. We were all amazed at this attraction and to find out he worked on it mostly by himself for two whole years. There is a story of why I'm here. Uh, you, everyone I think on Route 66 that I really know and most people know me uh, that I've connected with, uh, they know I lost my husband. I knew Hugh and Zelta uh, before, and I remember this just being a happy place. And Hugh Davis was just this kind, gentle, charismatic, charismatic person. He was just soft-spoken and just comfortable to be around, very artistic. So uh, I, after about a year of wandering around in a daze, I called down here and asked if they needed a volunteer, and they said, boy, do we ever. <laughs> well. The gift shop. The gift, yeah, the gift shop was here. It just wasn't open. Uh, so I, the first year I was here, I love people in the first place. I don't care who you are. There's good in you, and I'm gonna find it. So, uh, but no one could tell me this man's name. I'd say, why did you stop at the blue well? I'm just, you know, some, and because it's a great photo op. Can you tell me the man's name? that built the well? Hmm. Not one person the whole first year could tell me Hugh Davis's name. That he had been a zoo director at age 23, which is unheard of. That he had he had photographed a wildlife expedition, several. Uh, helped build a children's camp that the 
carvings are beautifully maintained and they are so proud of those in Colorado. He has history connected all over. Um, and no one knew anything about this man. Nothing at all. And I'm like, you know, everything he built by hand here, no blueprints except the well. And nobody could tell me his name. And so I thought, okay, well, you need to stay one more year. You need to do some education here. So I started telling the history. And uh, then it became kind of this thing. The well kind of saved me. It kind of pulled me out of my funk. Uh, they let me use an axe and all this good stuff. That I, you know, country girls think it's fun. So anyway, um, it was just very good for me. It, and as time has gone on, I've just shared more and more history. And I, I, the well is saved now. The history is saved now. And why have I stayed nine years? I think that's really it. And I have never honestly met one cranky person in the nine years that I have been here. That's and that amazing. is that is totally <laughs> amazing. Uh, I think the city of Catoose is going to do great things with the property. I think they're going to, to keep it nostalgic, which is like the Coleman Theater, the Round Barn, uh, Totem Pole Park. Anything that is not that shouldn't be glitzed up because of what it is. I think they're going to keep it that way. I do think eventually there will be a bigger information center, um, a tourism center. I'm not, I've not been told that. Um, and as a volunteer, I have my own definite ideas of what I would like to see happen. Yeah. Uh, playground equipment, I would like to see the boats that Hugh Davis had because it's not your normal playground. It's not, you know, it's an education boat. You can crawl in and out, you can ring the bell, you can turn the steering wow. wheel. And you know, you have knotted ropes and all of this. And so I would like to see some of that nostalgic come back as far as playground equipment, because if you have any kind of child in your life and you've been to a playground, they're all pretty much alike. Oh yeah. Well, the park is always open. The park's always open. Okay. The park is always open. And I'm down here um, once or twice a week during the winter if it's warm enough. Mm -hmm. If the sun is shining and it's about 50, if we get those days, um, I will come down and fill up all the magazine racks and stuff like that. And if someone wanders through and wants to buy something, we talk a while. And, okay. and uh, so, but no, we are basically we go down in January and open back up mid March. Email is lindahobbs1 at hotmail.com and uh, anyone can email me, they can text me. I answer, I have, she said she's wonderful about answering text. So if they get a hold of me, I will answer them back. That was so much fun, Brian. It was an amazing trip. Thank you, Mayor Louie Keen, for being a mega executive executive producer and sending us there. Yeah. <laughs> I never thought I'd be in the belly of a blue well and survive. <laughs> No, the well didn't talk to me. <laughs> but she tried to talk to it. it. Did. Hit the like button, subscribe, leave us a comment. Tell us where you want to see us go next. And on behalf of myself, from Miss Tiffany, and everybody in Uranus, thank you very much. See you next time. On Uranus on Route 66.